Good evening, and welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today we have Dan Lilker on. How are you doing today, man? All right. How's it going, man? Um, I'm going pretty good. I wanted to have you on and sneak you on before the holidays to, uh, or actually when it was airs, to, to expose people to you that don't know you, that should know you. Well, you're well known in the metal community, but more people should know of your your your, your playing, your songs, your 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 bass that is just has the most crushing sound. Your bass sound is I can hear your in every album you do of every group. It you know it it stands out. Um, I can say when I was younger, I remember when you first did Nuclear Salt came out. And I heard that, you know, I liked your stuff. But then around 89, 90, you guys were on Combat and Effect Records. And um, that was Handle with Care. And I was an intern for them. So I remember packing, packing promo kits together for, for that album for you guys <laughs> wow. out to radio. So cool. that was kind of, it was kind of a neat time. I know you didn't always get the best deal from them, but it seems like record labels weren't always the best for you guys. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, uh, that could be very hit or miss with. A lot of bands will tell you that, you know, um, just that uh, basically when you're a band just doing stuff because you want to do it creatively, you end up eventually becoming like a business product to, and, you know, that's what you had to do back then. You couldn't, nobody had pro tools or band. Yeah. You know, you had to sign to a label to get the budget to go to a real studio to record and then have them release your records. So, yeah, you had to make some compromises and sacrifices because that's what you had to do to get your music out to the world on a small level like in our office it was a lot of us like i was just an intern so like we had the enthusiasm for, for you know you and actually i think i think glenn had a, an album out the cia album came out at the same time like everything was being promoted like everyone was really into your music in our office because we were you know less corporate <laughs> you know oh, that's cool. yeah, yeah. Of, in atlanta so it was really awesome at the time um so if we can step back a little bit, I want to talk about um, you went from Anthrax and then right after Anthrax, everyone knows how famously it happens, but we'll skip right up to Nuclear Salt and then you start doing uh, Brutal Truth, which is a really, really awesome band. Um, you. uh, you're welcome. I still listen to it to this day. I listen to you know, everything, but that band when you came in and that was, what was a big switch for that at that time? Was it a break or what was going on there? Um. Brutal Truth formed in 1990 because everyone in Nuclear Assault were encouraged to do solo projects by the lawyers we had because all the contractual crap was all tied up in a knot. It's like getting back to what I was talking about with the last thing about yeah. how you were being a product and everything. And what had happened was a lot of the stuff with labels, all the legal bullshit had gotten tied up in a whole bunch of knots that was going to take a while Mm -hmm. for them to untangle so they said guys um why don't you guys just do something else for the moment you know don't record don't go on tour if you want to pursue some other things that you wanted to get to this would be a good time to do it so i having been immersing myself in more you know intense music than thrash metal by then you know like you know ryan death metal black metal shit like that i decided to pursue something as a project that was going to be a lot more intense and completely different than nuclear assault. And that turned into brutal truth. And then a couple of years down the line, I realized that that's really where my heart was and that's what my passion was. And I uh, left nuclear assault and did brutal truth full time for a while. It's weird that the lawyers would have you guys separate. Cause you should think at the time, you don't want the band to do separate albums, you know, historically, cause the, the bands will start to, you know, splinter and go kind of go away from each other. It almost feels like, you know, to have you guys do separate things, it's almost like it's like being married and dating other people, being like, well, why don't you go out and, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's kind of what happened, too. But that was also for us. Of us right. That. There was but it's interesting moments. that you, lawyers would actually encourage you guys to do that. Um, but it worked out for you. You know, historically, you've you've stayed true. You're probably one of the truest people that's always stayed for, like, non-big labels. You've always followed your heart in all your projects, you know. Well, yeah, I've for me, music, um, it really depends on why you play music and what your goals were and anything. And I never had anything like that. I just played music because it was a passion for me. You know, I wasn't trying to get rich or meet girls or whatever, blah, blah, you know. And so um, I don't even think about it. It's too close to home. I just do what I do. And other people make those comments. And I'm like, yeah, I guess that's true. You know, well, it's, uh, it's step away. Than, yeah, well, if yeah. you look at the industry, as if you step outside yourself, look at the industry, it's not always like that. Right. It's, it's a very noticeable thing. You kind of stand out 
when it comes to that, you know. Oh, cool. It's, yeah, it's yeah. going to be, you know, I'm just going to say, you, you, you know, that's get the, you get a nice guy in metal rap, rap, you know, between that and then, you you know, you've, you've been very diplomatic with the anthrax thing and it, it shows because you guys are still friends with SOD, you're still doing stuff now. Um, actually, it's kind of interesting how you guys do that, the, the, um, the recent SOD stuff, the um, isolation stuff. Oh, the quarantine videos, yeah. Yeah, those were fun. Got, yeah, well, I mean, back when all this crap with the pandemic first started, uh, those guys got in touch with me because Charlie had been doing that with other people, just like, you know, just these quarantine video things where everybody gets their parts and they kind of put their part on it and then they somebody assembles it all so they can put it on YouTube. So uh, I was approached for that and said, sure, why not? You know, I mean... Uh, what else were you doing around that? Everybody was home and kind of freaked out. And I'm glad we did that stuff because a lot yeah. of people, if you look on the comments and just people who were just, you know, I would see in real life or just be in touch with, they said that that was very helpful at mm -hmm. a time like that. And a lot of people were really freaked out. So, you know, a lot of dudes were like, yeah, man, I made me feel like I was 18 years old again. And that's exactly what I needed at this time when yeah. everything was so uncertain and, you know, weird. So that's exactly what I was going to say. I think it allows people to catch that moment of happiness and it reminds me of something and you kind of you kind of break the cycle i was happy yeah. when i saw him too i was like yeah all right you know yeah i think that's just uh what some people needed then so uh, we were more than happy to be a part of that do you think when this ends you guys will ever do anything again like that's hard to say um i would hope so i would but it's not entirely up to me so no i mean like the doors are always open you guys have seemed to have a great relationship it's more of a scheduling thing or type of deal well, yeah and um I'm, yeah, I would do something, you know, nothing that extensive. We're all getting a little old now, but, uh, you know, show here and there, sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's a special band. With that being said, you had left Nuclear Assault, but then you felt like you came back and you've done some small stuff with Nuclear Assault. Now you guys play some stuff once in a while, right? Because of scheduling. Are you, where are you at with that? Yeah, well, by, by now, John, you know, our front man is a, a high school teacher and, <laughs> The New York uh, State Department of Education, they're not very forgiving. Like, you uh, you cannot uh, just take off and go do anything. So his schedule, we have to work around that. So obviously there's summer vacation. And then, so let's say, you know, Christmas coming up now, but we don't have. Also, people might want to spend time with their families and not just, you know, immediately go, okay, run off and do a mini tour. So, um, yeah, um, I left Nuclear Assault in 92, came back in 2002, because by then it was fun to play Thrash again. You know, I just had to come back around to it. I got all the death metal, black metal, and grind out of my system for a while. And we do shows occasionally now, and it's just fun like that. That's cool. You know, John and I are really the only guys from the back in the day lineup, but I mean, it works. You don't want to do that thing where it's just one dude and it's unrecognizable. Right. Well. But, you know, I think we get away with it. So, yeah, because I haven't seen the new lineup thing. So, so Glenn, what happened to Glenn? He's just not. He uh, Glenn had some. Um, physical issues with his arm you know to do this amazing drummer and he always pounded the shit yeah. out of his drums but uh between his back and his arm he just ended up with some things that made it very painful to play so unfortunately he had to bow out well much respect to him he, he was thunder there for you guys you know uh so you got you're also in a second band right right now you have a second band you play, you play with still well um i am in a band around here called blurring as in blurring the line between reality and fantasy, which is a uh, very extreme, atonal, evil sounding grindcore. And the dude who plays drums in that band is Eric Burke, who also plays guitar in Nuclear Assault and played guitar in Brutal Truth. It's one of those classic <laughs> things where you only know a few dudes who could do stuff right. So, and he's a very talented multi instrumentalist. So, there's that. And uh, I'm okay with that. You know, um, I turned 57 a couple of months ago. So, I don't mind slowing down a little bit and just, uh, you know, I kind of semi-retired almost seven years ago. And right. even now, you know, I just, uh, I'm content to just do a few shows here and there. You know, I've now looked at all this virus and pandemic shit. You wouldn't be able to go anywhere anyway. Stuff right. keeps roaring up and back like this Omicron one. But um, yeah, uh, I'm just uh, at the point in my life now where, I, I'm not 22 anymore. That was 35 years ago. I don't have to go out and see the world like I did. You know, I mean, uh, 
still do something now and then if something crops up and sounds interesting, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. All right, so my last question is, what are you using for gear for your sound? You have a certain sound and your bass is just so awesome. What is your... your well, music? I mean, the one thing that's been consistent the last 25 years, although other things have changed, has been the distortion pedal I use. So that has been the crux of it. There's been different bases and different amps. And that would be, the company is Tech 21, and it is a Sans Amp GT2. Now, I'm a bass player, but that is a guitar pedal, not a bass pedal. Right. That's how you get more grind, distortion, feedback, howl, gnarl, evil, all that <laughs> shit. So um, right now I'm sponsored by Ibanez, um, basses and Warwick amplification. Some of it is just the, the fact that I play very aggressively. You can have you all the guitar, right? You also play guitar. I play guitar a little bit. I write music on guitar, but uh, primarily I'm a bass player. You know, I can fuck around on drums too. And I started playing piano when I was five. So, you know, I can get around a few instruments, but um, bass is my thing. That's yeah. what I always kept drawing to. And uh, that would be, that pedal has kind of made my sound. I guess you could call it identifiable. Not a lot of bass players would use that pedal. They go, that's for a guitar player. Dude. And I go, no, it's not. So. Yeah. Because it feels like a lot of your projects, it's easy to pick out that bass sound or something similar. You have kind of a certain tone that cuts through the, all the other. Well, you need to, too, with that type of music. You know, it's pretty aggressive and it's like a wall of sound. Well, you know, it helps. I mean, I think there's a lot of metal albums where the bass is not really, I mean, I'm not talking about just like Injustice for All, where it's kind of bleak. <laughs> I know. Other but, you know, the bass is an instrument that shouldn't be overlooked frequency wise. So it's not an ego thing. It's like when I'm on a record, I want that bass to be up there because if you don't have it where it's supposed to be, then uh, you're not taking advantage of all the frequencies that the ear can process. So well, sometimes you your bass is actually the lead line in the song, it feels like to me when I hear it because the guitars are more blended together, but the bass kind of leads the way. You know, well, how well I hear it. maybe it's how it's mixed. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> It's not a Steve Harris thing. I'm not pushing no. everybody. To no, no, no. Yeah. No, not that okay. That's yes. awesome. So your, your band, though, the other band, though, are you going to do anything with them, Blurred, at all? Well, um, we've had a few releases. Um, and you can actually just look on our Facebook rather than me just babble out, you know. Okay. And the link uh, for it underneath the show. Hmm? I'll put the link. For, I'll find it. And I'll put yeah. the link for it underneath the show for everybody. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That'll be awesome. Yeah, we, uh, we just do stuff now and then, an occasional live show, and uh, we're very low-maintenance blurring. You know, everybody's got day jobs. We don't have any illusions about going out and conquering the world. We just record once in a while. Yep. Be an out-of-town show once a year. Otherwise, just uh, here and there, and that's fine. That's exactly where we're all at, what we want to do and what, what we want to accomplish and not bother. Well, you're very close to me, so I'm in New England, so... Oh, Hopefully, cool. when this opens up, come down and check out a show of yours. Yeah, be awesome. yeah man. not that far. No, it's not that far at all. Okay. Well, this is just a, a mini interview. You, and thank you for giving me some time today. And maybe next year we can do something a little more in depth. But um, you know, I want to thank you. And everyone check out all this music. I'll put links for all this stuff. You know. <laughs> you're very welcome. And uh, yeah, man. Maybe we'll do this some other time. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Take all right, man. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. All right.